Hello, and thank you so much for tuning into the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. The opioid epidemic is now triggering action from doctors and federal lawmakers. Uh, Just recently, for the first time ever, the FDA requested that a drug company pull a painkiller off the uh, market due to its potential for abuse. Now, this epidemic is also raising some questions as to how we can combat the epidemic. Our guest is returning to speak with us, Dr. Kerry Donaldson, and he's going to talk about how genetics play a role in opioid addiction. Welcome back to Health Professional Radio, Dr. Donaldson. Yo, good to be back. Thanks for having us again. Now, talk a little bit about the numbers uh, of this epidemic. What constitutes an epidemic in the opioid situation here? What are the numbers telling us? Yeah, so, so Neil, you know, unfortunately, uh, you're right. This opioid epidemic is now declared a national emergency in the U.S. Uh, the numbers have inflated a little bit since we last talked. Definitely greater than 60,000, probably greater than 70,000 patients lost their lives to an, a drug overdose in 2016. So a really profound measured effect. Uh, in terms of economic impact, greater than $20 billion was spent on direct hospitalization in 2015 alone, uh, greater than $80 billion. Both of those numbers are probably somewhat undercounting the, the total cost to treat these patients and their families. Uh, really, really hard to find a, a more measurable, profound epidemic in the U.S. right now. Number one leading cause of death in adults, greater than 30, less than 50. Uh, it just, it just really, really is strongly affecting, unfortunately, a large swath of Americans right now. Mm-hmm. Now, I understand that, that we as uh, the United States, we're the world leader in opioid prescriptions. Is that a fact? Oh, absolutely. So, uh, you know, greater than, depending upon the particular drug, but, but definitely greater than 90%, sometimes greater than 95% of all manufactured opioids are consumed within the U.S. You know, um, not being a healthcare professional myself, I do understand that um, the CDC and, and many other organizations are always working to combat diseases. And oftentimes, the combat involves preventing the disease in the first place once we've identified an epidemic and get it under control. Is that the same way that it's oh, that we're hoping that it works with this opioid epidemic, or is this something totally beyond that type of, of solution? You know, that's exactly what we're trying to do. And in, in particular, this, the test that we're talking about today, Life Kit Predict, tries to identify this opioid uh, before the patients get into the, the negative cycle of addiction. What do I mean by that? Well, 8 out of 10 patients that become addicted to illicit drugs really start with prescription opioids. And, and the goal here is to identify the patients that have a high likelihood, based upon their genetic makeup, of developing dependency prior to giving that first drug. So that's exactly what you're talking about. It's one of the ways that you combat epidemics is identifying patients or populations at greatest risk and then really addressing what resource needs to be brought to bear to to sort of stamp it out or start to snuff out the the, the feeder for this epidemic. You're so exactly right. If, if I'm understanding correctly, and I, I do believe that I am, we're not moving away from awareness and education as a preventative measure but we're going above and beyond that and identifying those who can be addicted or who probably will become addicted, whether they're educated or aware or not. Is that what, what's happening? Yeah. So, so what, what this is is a, a tool that allows a more accurate assessment mm-hmm. of risk. You're not going to go away from awareness. You're not going to go away from education. But what this allows practitioners or clinicians or prescribers or even patients is a more complete understanding of their individualized risk for developing dependency on these types of medications. How will um, identifying these patients before they ever uh, begin an opioid regimen for whatever reason or another, or being denied that regimen based on these, uh, these tests, how will it impact the overall care of those who um, are in need of pain relief? Yeah, so your, your question right there is one of clinical utility. And it's, it's critical to understand that really this is a portion of the picture, but doesn't paint the determination of how patient care occurs. Really what, what this particular test does, the reason we're with you today, is we looked at genetic makeup, something that's not really new. It goes back to the 1950s or 1960s, understanding that certain patients or, or diseases like addiction or alcoholism can run in families. We used advanced automated 
uh, intelligence or machine learning to ask whether those two populations, one that has a likelihood or is dependent on opioids versus one that is not, if we can use genes to reliably determine whether there's a difference or dividing that population, we can. Uh, the the 97% sensitivity and 88% specificity, the performance of that test speaks to the clinical utility. Now, how is that used? Uh, the, the first way in which this is used, and we talked about it a little already, is, okay, a patient's going for an elective surgery or procedure, and they have an opportunity to either follow a pain regimen that would include opioids or one that has alternative uh, therapies associated with it, which path to choose. And this just allows the practitioner or the patient to ha- make a more informed decision which pathway they want to choose, whether they're going to include opioids as part of that prescription or that pathway, an opioid prescription, or an alternative therapy. That's the first question that this answers. Another one would be is once a patient's already addicted or in a situation where, unfortunately, they're seeking treatment uh, for addiction, how do you go through and select the appropriate medicine? This particular test also helps with that. So that's really what this is focused on. It's not necessarily answering all the questions in terms of clinical utility, but at least giving more guidance and a more complete picture on which pathway you should go down. Seeing as how the uh, prescription, the the pharmaceutical industry that produces uh, opioids is so closely tied and regulated by the government, when we begin testing individuals for the likelihood of being addicted or not being addicted, and the government controlling how these opioids are prescribed or not prescribed, how much of that gets into, and as you say, those who are seeking treatment for whatever reason or another, how do we navigate some of the legalities associated with identifying these people before they ever take opioids? Because they may not be prescription opioids that they're susceptible to. Yeah. So, so Neil, I think that the magnitude of the problem we just discussed over the last few minutes clearly is somewhat unique, and I think that our solutions have to be somewhat unique. And I think really what we're so excited about is that the opportunity for the government, the payers, the patients, the providers, the pharmaceutical companies to come together and be part of comprehensive solutions to address this epidemic. And that's something we're very excited about. Uh, This is one of the the new tests, the new ways to deal with this. In fact, it's the first of its kind. Um, And happy to share additional information with you. Uh, you know, we're, we're glad to be here again, and I'm sure this is, you know, the second in a series of these talks. Uh, additional information can be found at prescientmedicine.com. That's P-R-E-S-C-I-E-N-T medicine.com. Right. And the, the name of the title of the study that these, uh, these genetic tests are referred into, uh, the Annals of Clinical and Laboratory Science, I do believe, is that, is that the uh, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, so, yeah, so the, the paper... One of the studies was published at that particular journal. There's many others that are coming out. Um, all those will be available on our website and happy to share or disseminate any more information if needed. Always a pleasure, Dr. Kerry Donaldson. Thanks for coming back in and talking with us. Thank you, Neil. Look forward to it again. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in studio with Dr. Kerry Donaldson. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in, and download at SoundCloud. And be sure and visit our affiliates page when you visit our platform at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au.